The Thule modulus is a very important variable and uh, dimensionless variable to understand in chemical engineering when we want to be able to describe concentration profiles and rates of reaction when we are dealing with catalysts that have internal mass transfer limitations. And to do that, what we start out by what we start out with is a shell mole balance. And if we analyze a porous catalyst pellet, and uh, it is a we're gonna in this example we're gonna be looking at a spherical catalyst pellet, but we also have slabs and cylindrical catalyst pellets that will have different, uh, slightly different derivations and different results. But in this example, uh, what we'll be analyzing is the different uh, the annular region between R and R plus delta R in a porous catalyst pellet. And uh, within this annular region, which is our control volume, we will have flux coming in from the outside, uh, diffusing inwards. We will have a reaction occurring in the control volume, as well as flux leaving our control volume to diffuse deeper into our catalyst. And so if we were to write a mole balance in which accumulation is equal to in minus out plus generation, we're going to assume steady state, so we would have no accumulation. Our inlet term will be equal to a variable called WAR, the flux of A in the radial direction, evaluated at R plus delta R, times the area, because flux is quantity per area per time, the area we will be uh, that the flux is coming through will be 4 pi times r plus delta r quantity squared. And then leaving our control volume, we will have the flux evaluated at r times 4 pi r squared. And then inside the catalyst pellet, we will have a reaction occurring, and that um, because we are because with catalysts we typically deal in rates per area we use a slightly different notation uh, and in this case we define a variable called k sub n prime prime so the reaction rate constant for an nth order reaction and then the prime prime indicates that we are this rate uh, will be dealing with a per area term and then so then times c a to the n so this is a generic nth order reaction involving some reactant A, and then we're going to multiply this by A sub I, which is the surface area per volume of the pellet, which is a given quantity by the manufacturer or on a test, and we're going to multiply that by the volume of the annular region we are working with, V sub A. V sub A is equal to, if we assume that uh, delta R is small enough, we can neglect curvature between the two inner and outer uh, shells. And in that case, we can essentially assume it's a shoebox, in which case the base of the shoebox will have an area of 4 pi R squared, and then the height of the shoebox uh, will be delta R, so this would be the volume of our annular region. And uh, I'll just make a quick note, A sub I is a given uh, quantity. And so this mole balance is where we will begin our Thiele modulus derivation. And so the next step is to divide, and I will call this equation one. So we're going to divide all of equation one by four pi delta r, as well as take the limit as delta r goes to zero. And what you'll note is that we have the definition of derivative inside our equation one in this war term, these fluxes. And so when we do that, what we end up with is the derivative with respect to r of the flux of a in the radial direction times r squared minus 
k sub n prime prime times c a to the n times a i times r squared. And this must equal zero because we are at steady state. And the next step, step two in the derivation, is apply fixed law. And fixed law tells us that WAR, the flux of A in the radial direction, we are assuming there's no convection. This term must be equal to the negative diffusion, effective diffusion, diffusion constant minus DE times the concentration gradient of A in the radial direction DCA dr. And so we plug WAR into our simplified mole balance. And when we do that, we end up with, because our effective diffusivity is, a, is independent of the variable r, we can pull it out of our equation. We have minus d effective times d dr of dca dr times r squared minus kn prime prime ca to the n times a sub i times r squared, sorry, r squared, and this must equal zero. And what we'll note here is because we've got two uh, functions in terms of r, we are going to need to apply the product rule to this. So this simplifies to uh, minus diffusion constant, or yeah, minus the effective diffusion constant times, and here we will have uh, r squared times d2ca dr squared, so the second derivative of ca with respect to r, and then plus 2r dca dr, and then minus the term we had previously. Oops. Sorry. And this must be equal to zero. And now what we'll do to algebraically simplify this and clean it up to isolate uh, this d2ca dr squared term is divide everything by minus d effective times r squared. And doing that leaves us with an important final equation, the second partial derivative of the concentration of A with respect to r plus, or rather minus, no, never mind, it is plus, um, plus 2 over r times dca dr plus k sub n prime prime times ca to the n power times a sub i times, uh, because we divide by the r squared, the r squared goes away, and then we divide this by d effective, and this is equal to zero. So this is a key equation that uh, we should uh, be happy we got to because from this equation, which I shall call star, we can define the concentration profile uh, of A in the radial direction. And so to do that, this is a side note, um, if we set boundary conditions in which we said uh, analyzing the concentration profile inside the, the spherical catalyst pellet, and this is uh, at the center line, we would expect to have something that looks like this. And because it's symmetric, we would have a boundary condition. One of our boundary conditions would be dCA dr at r equals zero must be equal to zero because the slope at this point is equal to zero. And then the other boundary conditions, this would be boundary condition one, Boundary condition two would be CA evaluated at R equals big R, the radius of the overall pellet. That will be equal to a constant CAS. And so applying these two boundary conditions and integrating this equation above will tell us what CA as a function of R is. And so this can be useful information if you were interested in knowing what concentration of A is at a particular radial uh, magnitude inside your pellet. But in the Thiele modulus derivation, 
what we're instead going to do with equation star is uh, non-dimensionalize it. And so when we non-dimensionalize something, uh, in this case, we will let a variable called psi, a dimensionless variable called psi, equal ca, and that's ca evaluated at any r, uh, divided by cas, which is a constant, uh, and it's the surface concentration of our pellet. And then we're going to find another not dimensionless variable called lambda, and we're going to let that be equal to the radial component divided by the total radius of our pellet. And this is also a uh, dimensionless quantity because it's length divided by length and molarity over molarity. And when we do that uh, and we apply that to each one of these terms, I'll do an example on the first and last term. Uh, what we see if we analyze d2ca dr squared, and then I would also like to rewrite ca and r squared here. If we rewrite this, uh, we can say ca is equal to psi times cas, as well as little r is equal to lambda times big R. And this term will be equal to d dr of dca dr, and then we plug in our definition of ca and r into here, so this would be equivalent to d d and then lambda r times d and then ca was psi times cas d lambda r and what we note in this equation is that we can pull out these quant constant quantities uh, r and cas and so this is equivalent to uh, cas divided by let me pull this up a little bit so I stopped <laughs> ruining the screen, uh, divided by big R squared, and d2 psi d lambda squared. And so the key thing to note here is that if we multiply this equation star above by the reciprocal, the reciprocal would be R squared over CAS, we can uh, eliminate this dimension and get a fully non-dimensional equation when we multiply uh, that term. Uh, and then the other, so we would apply the same rule to the second term here in the equation, uh, star. And then the third term gets a little bit uh, tricky, but it makes sense algebraically. We want to extract a psi from it. And so to do that, what we say, and this will be a, a algebra note, um, when we multiply the third term by r squared over CAS, the reciprocal of this, if we analyze it, so we would have k sub n prime prime times CA to the n times A sub i over the effective diffusion constant times r squared over CAS if we note how um, ca to the n is equal to ca times ca to the n minus one power, and then plug this in here, and we recall how psi was equal to ca over cas, we can uh, use the cas here and the ca here to extract a dimensionless variable out of this equation. And so what this third term becomes is k sub n prime prime times a sub i times r squared times c a to the n minus one divided by the effective diffusion constant times psi. And plugging everything back into our equation, what we are ultimately left with after successfully non-dimensionalizing equation star, so I'll call this star prime, uh, is d2 psi d lambda squared plus two over lambda times d psi d lambda plus, and then k sub n prime prime 
times a sub i times r squared times c a to the n minus 1 power over the effective diffusion constant times psi must be equal to 0. And the key takeaway from this derivation is this quantity in front of psi in our last term. This is the Thiele modulus squared uh, for an nth order reaction. So we kept things generic, this entire derivation. So with a spherical pellet, it's, uh, we can uh, let n equal 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, depending on uh, whatever our reaction order is. And at this point, so in a textbook, uh, typically when they tell you what psi sub n is, uh, they'll give you the square root of this relationship and pull out the big R. Um, but uh, the, the gist of it is still the same. So at this point, it uh, is a good question to ask. Why do we care so much about our Thiele modulus and um, how can we actually use it? So when we're dealing with internal transport limitations, we define a, uh, we use a little bit of math to say that Ra observed, so your observed rate of reaction will be equal to an effectiveness factor called eta times Ra evaluated at CAS and TS. And what this means is that uh, we're assuming that uh, CA will be equal to CAS for all R inside the pellet. So if we had no internal mass transfer limitations, uh, what we would say is that um, eta would equal 1. So if we had an isothermal pellet and no internal mass transfer limitations, eta would equal 1. But uh, when eta doesn't equal 1, when we are taking into account mass internal mass transfer limitations, what we instead do is uh, use the relationship between eta and the Thiele modulus and when we have strong mass transfer mass transfer limitations, there is a relationship between the Thiele modulus and uh, eta for an nth order reaction that tells us that two over n plus one to the one half power times three divided by phi sub n is equal to eta. And so evaluating the observed rate of reaction if you are given the variables in your Thiele modulus you can come to someone and tell them uh, exactly what kind of uh, rate they can expect to see and so the steps to evaluating the observed rate of reaction would be to first evaluate your Thiele modulus you can rederive it it will be good practice but typically you'll be given the variables and you can look up the tabulated value of the Thiele modulus for the specific scenario you're looking at. Once you know your Thiele modulus, you know what reaction order you're working with. Uh, so an example would be if uh, you had an elementary reaction, two moles of A, we're forming some product B, uh, N would be equal to 2, minus RA would be equal to K uh, times CA squared, assuming this is elementary. Um, so n would equal 2 in this relationship. You would have the other variables you need to define uh, your Thiele modulus. You would plug in your Thiele modulus. You would find what your effectiveness factor is. You would plug this into this equation and evaluate the rate, assuming that CA was all CAS and TS, and you would be able to tell someone what the observed rate of reaction should be. So this... Uh, right here is uh, technically a fictitious quantity, um, but once we apply our effectiveness factor, uh, it tells us what, uh, we, what we would expect. And then the final thing to note about the effectiveness factor, eta, 
um, is that eta can range from uh, zero to any number greater than one. If we had, for example, an exothermic reaction occurring, if the reaction was exothermic enough that the rise in temperature inside your pellet and we had internal trans uh, temperature limitations um, increased our reaction rate constant sufficiently, we can actually have higher rates of reaction than we would expect. And so, um, effectiveness factor. So, um, so the range can be from zero to technically infinity, but let's be reasonable. It'll probably be somewhere around one. Uh, it, it can be greater than one and it can be less than one. Uh, but this is the range that you can expect for eta. So I hope you guys found this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and this was a derivation of the Thiele modulus for a generic nth order reaction.